Hello, this is Mr. McGovern, and welcome back to the fifth video in the series on rotational motion. So today we're going to look at the rotational equations of motion, and I'm going to give a quick two examples of those. So back in level two, we first met the linear equations of motion. These were equations to deal with objects that were accelerating at a uniform acceleration. And there's multiple equations here because each equation is missing one variable. So the equation on the left, final velocity equals initial velocity plus at, is missing the displacement. So if you have a problem given to you and you don't have any displacement, you could use this. Similarly, the next one's missing acceleration, the next one's missing time, and the last one is missing final velocity. The rotational equations in motion are for a an object that's spinning, rotating, and going undergoing acceleration in that rotation, so speeding up its spinning or slowing down its spinning. And these equations are equivalent. So the first one we have angular velocity final equals angular velocity initial plus angular acceleration times time. So look at the equivalence to the, the formula above it. Initial velocity to angular velocity, initial uh, velocity to initial angular velocity, acceleration, angular acceleration, time, time. And if you go through each one of these, you see there is an equivalence between them. That this one just, uh, these ones are just um, using the rotational variables as opposed to the linear variables. So, as an example, I want to talk. I want to show you a, a linear example that would have been from level two last year, just to remind you of the process you went through. So after you identified that you have a system that's undergoing acceleration and you realize you have to use one of these equations, then you end up writing down what you know. So in this case, we know the initial velocity was zero because it says it accelerates from rest at a rate of two meters per second squared. So that's your acceleration for eight seconds and that's your time. What distance does it travel? So we want to know the, the distance or displacement. And we look for a formula that has those four variables in it. And the one is obviously the last one. And then we just substitute in, rearrange if necessary, but not in this case. Substitute our numbers in, and we get an answer out, 64. Rotational example is exactly the same. The hardest physical step is for you to identify that your system is undergoing rotational motion, and for you to realize, hey, I should try out one of these equations of motion for a rotating system. So a saw blade accelerates from rest at a rate of 120 radians per second squared for 1.5 seconds. What's its final angular velocity? So it's undergoing acceleration. We want to know velocity, so we're going to use one of these four equations. Same process as before. I write down what I have. So I have my initial velocity or angular velocity is zero because it accelerated from rest. Angular acceleration was 120 radians per second. Time was 1.5, and we want to find final angular velocity. So now I have to find a, a formula that has one, two, those three, four variables in it, and it turns out it's the first one here. Omega f equals omega i plus at. Substitute in, and work out my answer. I get 180 radians per second. So this video has been short and sweet, but just showing the equivalence between the equations of motion you learned for linear examples last year in level two, and the equations of motion for rotating systems uh, that you use this year in level three.